My name is Katie Chang of Eats Place. Today I'm going to show you how to make kimchi. I'm also going to show you how to make um, dumplings. So we're going to make kimchi dumplings. Okay, first you're going to start off with some Napa cabbage. And it's really important that it's very fresh. We use a local farm in Maryland. And you just want to chop it up in uh, reasonable sized pieces. And it will get smaller as it ferments. And you want to add enough salt so the cabbage can wilt a little bit. Sprinkle the salt in and massage it to release the juices. And over time, maybe after a half an hour or so, the juices will start releasing and you can already see it's getting very wet. So after about three days, the cabbage has broken down. It's no longer cabbage. It's massively transformed into the beginning of kimchi. It's very tangy right now and it's really sour. It's got a pH about a little less than 11. And then we're going to add the seasonings to the kimchi. We're going to add onion. The key to the chopping the onion is, besides not crying into it, is that you want to make it relatively thin so the onion gets absorbed and isn't overpowering to the whole kimchi. Because kimchi is really um, not just a food item to me, it's actually a thing, a way of life and a way of doing things. So you just want to make sure everything is really balanced. As it ferments more, the onion will um, blend and the flavors will mix with the rest of the kimchi. And then next up, um, you're going to add some edamame for crunch and a nutty texture and protein. And you're going to add some beautiful carrots for color and sweetness. And I just kind of cut them into matchstick sizes. We've always made kimchi as a family, as a little girl, and people just like to, it usually takes a long time to make kimchi because you're kind of chopping and gossiping the whole time, but now we're just kind of running through it. It's actually very efficient. But um, the, the whole, whole idea is the whole family gets together and they make kimchi and um, just sort of share stories. And really, I feel like the kimchi tastes differently because it's fermenting with what's in the air. And when you have all that family in the air and all that sort of gossip and love and loudness, it kind of gets concentrated into the food. And next, you're going to add your spice mix of garlic and ginger. It might seem to be a lot of garlic, but it'll mellow when it ferments. And then we're going to add our red peppers. This is a blend of um, a local peppers that I had roasted and dried, but you can use any pepper that you like. You can use cayenne. This is a um, Korean pepper mix. And then with your hands, you can just start mixing the kimchi. And that's how you get kimchi. It's ready to eat right now, or you can let it ferment longer. You can put it in a um, covered container and leave it on your counter if you want it to be tangier, or you can store it in your refrigerator and it's ready to eat. Since it's a live product, it's going to change over time and the flavors will concentrate and it'll mellow out and intensify. Um, but then it's ready to eat now. Now we're going to make the dumpling dough. So what you want to do is you want to start out with your flour and you just want to mound it on your work surface and you make a little hole for it. And you want to add some water and you just want to trickle it in and sort of do about half flour, half water. Keep kneading it and mixing it until it makes a dough. So after you knead it for five minutes, what uh, you want to put it in a bag, a uh, covered, and just let it rest. Let, let it have a little nap for maybe uh, a couple hours, and then it'll be ready for you to roll out. After your dough has rested, it's going to be nice and glossy and elastic. And you just want to dust your work surface, and you want to just sort of roll it out into an even log, like this. And then you want to just section it off, and each section will become its own dumpling wrapper. Take a dumpling wrapper. Make sure you have plenty of flour so it doesn't stick and you want to sort of round it out and then press it down with your hand and then you want to roll it and you want to take a regular rolling pin and you just want to roll and sl slide, roll and slide. And so as you move you're getting the whole dumpling and leaving the belly intact. And then you have your hand rolled dumpling. You can use any filling you want. Um, I love doing the kimchi dumplings because I love my kimchi but any filling will work 
So now you have your wrappers. They're very, um, they're going to be very light and, and fluffy, but don't worry, they're very strong. They can take on the kimchi. And you want to take maybe a tablespoon of kimchi and just put it on, put it in the middle, feed the, feed the dumpling. And then the, to wrap it, what you want to do is first join the middle like this and pinch it shut. And then you want to pleat and fold. So you just push in with your index finger to your middle finger and pleat and fold, pleat and fold. In the end, I like to tuck to make it pretty. On the other side, you do the same to meet in the middle. Pleat and fold, pleat and fold, and tuck. And there you have it. You have a kimchi dumpling. But you have to make like 100 more, and then you can cook them. That's not enough. <laughs>